welcome to another episode of Mr. Block's Design Rescue. Today, I want to run through a couple of tips on how to do the iterative process, specifically in logo design. And when, I, when I'm talking about the iterative process, what I mean is des designing your, your graphic elements and then taking that copy, copying it over, making changes to that copy, and then continuing to make further copies and make further changes as you go through the design process. And I'm going to show you what I mean here. So in this project for Ed Law, uh, ED Law, uh, I am working on this. Uh, it is the law program at El Dorado High School, and they need a new logo. So I decided to work on the um, the, the hawk basically holding a gavel and you can see basically how I started with the j basic shape I did that right over my sketch and then moved it off to the side and began to play with it now as I go through I'm basically designing and then making a copy and making little changes then making another copy so in this copy you can see I'm, I've indicated that I changed the, the line weight of course I've spaced out the wings more proportionally, and then I copied it down. I um, added, oh, I forgot here, I also added this little piece on the inside of the gavel. Um, I have adjusted the spacing in the wing, and then I copied it down again, and then I made another uh, change by simply adding these white strips to see what it would look like if I cut the, the wing apart before committing to actually cutting it apart, just laying white strips right over it. And I like the way that that looks, so I basically cut it out, and then I added this element here. I was thinking that would be the little wooden uh, puck, little piece that the gavel uh, bangs down on. But, um, you know, and then I went ahead and I rounded that in this version, the gavel position to add more of the, uh, the stick, and then added these little white areas here to see what it would look like with those cutouts. Uh, and here you can see I've, I changed the gavel design, uh, and then I moved on and widened that little area there. In this one, I took this version and simply tried to make it 3D, and that's basically what, what I did here. And then I came to the conclusion that this was the design. This one right here was the one that I wanted to move forward with, um, and which you can see I, I did, and then started playing around with different versions of it. Um, and, and then, you know, just to see what it would look like with different lockups, different layouts. Um, and then I, I basically reached out to the community of graphic designers that I belong to. And I, you could actually just ask any graphic designer or ask people that you know to take a look and give you some suggestions if they know how to do design this that would be super helpful because then they can give you suggestions like this where uh, I was instructed and you know, even after 30 years of design I'm happy to take instruction uh, take direction from another designer and he gave me suggestions to make that beak look better make the head look better and round out the gavel a bit, round out these corners, and get rid of that little piece there. He said it was irrelevant information, and I, I agree with that. So we went from this to that uh, because I followed direction, and um, you know, and then I basically continued laying it out some more to see what it might look like, and then I've come to the final, uh, basically the final design, uh, which is this one right there. Uh, which is when I started to play around with the f basically the layout and I put uh, uh, a box around it here, put it with just the name. Uh, as you can see, just playing with lots of different layouts with the, the um, tagline. Uh, and this first, this top row is for production, meaning uh, it is, these are the designs, the artboards that I'm going to be outputting for the client in the end. You notice that I don't bring the artboard all the way up to the, the line, right up to the perimeter of the, um, the logo. I do leave a little bit of space. That's my personal preference. Some people like to go right up to the perimeter of the, um, the object that's on the artboard. Uh, I like to leave a little bit of space. So, and then what I do also is I'll lay out a, um, 
a, a bunch of them for presentation. So this is the these are the ones that I'm going to be showing to the client. I won't be showing these, but what I'll do is I'll make these a, a specific size, and I've set them to 1280 by 768, so that they're consistent. And when I show them, it, it looks looks good. They show up in a consistent way. Um, and then I'll make a PDF of all of these artboards, and then also include these as well, mock-ups. And so I did a mock-up of actually um, the room, the classroom that's specifically for ED Law, and I put the design right on the wall so they can see what it looks like. I've got mock-ups in different formats, of, you know, in a, a sign on the, the wall as though it were a business on a cardboard, on a shirt, if they wanted to get a van for ED Law, right? So uh, give them lots of different ways to kind of envision it in the real world. And then, I, last but not least, I need to have something that would go in my portfolio. And I'll use that same 12, it's 1280 by 768 size. And I just basically take a, a screenshot or take a picture of my sketches you always as much as possible you, you try to show your creative process show where you started and then where you ended up and this is what i've done here showing the mark as well as the lockup and some of the thoughts that went into um, the design okay and so that let me move that back over there a little bit this is essentially how now this is a very organized layout of my my file i actually took time to organize it a bit my files are generally a lot messier but the iterative process is very very important to make sure that you have history of different elements that you may want to go back and try something different right so um, you may want to go back and try to use this element maybe do something with two feathers rather than three for the wing or you know, move the head in a different position, but keep the same wing. So you couldn't do that if you'd gone all the way down and made lots and lots of changes, and that's the only version that you have. So the iterative process is very, very important in the design uh, design world, and make it something that is part of your routine in every project. Please let me know if you have any questions. I hope this was clear. If not. Um, listen to it again, and maybe it'll become more clear. <laughs> Have a great afternoon, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care.